The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 4th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email, send it early, and send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, i got all the U.S. entities trading to the upside. All the S&P 500 sectors trading to the upside. Dow's up 751. S&P's up 105. That's 25 and 2.9 percent. NASDAQ 100 is over 3 percent, as is the Russell. And the semis are up over 4 percent. They're up 103 points, trading out 24.97. Gold's up 30 bucks, nearly 2 percent. Silver's up nearly 3 percent or 60 cents. Lights be crude up 280. That's 3 percent. Natural gas is up over 3 percent. We've got some movers and we've got some shakers. The shakers would be Calvista Pharmaceuticals off eight bucks or 56 percent. That's a stinger. As far as other individual stocks, it's mostly ETFs. In fact, it's basically all ETFs until I get down to Mar Avai Life Science, which is off three bucks or 12 percent. Now, to the upside, Booking Holdings is the dollar leader up 82 bucks, five percent. Mercado Libre, 65 bucks, seven percent. Azimil Holdings, 32 bucks, seven and a half percent. Broadcom, 20 bucks. 4%. SVB Financial is up 5% or 18 buckaroonies. So we got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's start by taking a look at the uh, let's look at the daily equity future contracts out here. So we've got the ES Mini upper left hand side. That's where we will start. And when we start there, what we see is that right now you've got a buy the D point pattern that confirmed yesterday with that nice big old bullish engulfing candle, bullish structured profile. Once you close above the center, that says it suggests price should make its way up to the top. And in essence, is doing that. That top is up at the 3806, 3807 level, 3806.95. Can't trade to that. 3807 is the number, the high so far today, 3803 ticks, 0.75. So that's its target. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ trading with inside its daily profile it is above the center, meaning that's where both buyers and sellers believe there was fair value within the range of 11.241 to 11.840. Price likely will target the top of its profile as well. That's at 11.841. If you take a look at the Dow, the Dow also forming in a nice uh, buy the D point pattern, and it is trading up into now its resistant zone. So the zone for the Dow is going to be, because they bear a structured profile, there are buyers and sellers that lurk, and we call them 50-50, at that fair value point or the center at the 3545 level. But it's all sellers that reside at 31256. So that's the sell zone. Now, the Russell 2000 may be giving us a clue about this rally. The Russell 2000 never busted its June lows. Why is that? Interest rates are going higher. The Dow, the, the Russell 2000 never busted busted is because it's got so much allocated to uh, uh, crude uh, energy 
and to uh, mining out there. I'm not sure. I don't know what the mix is. If Tom O'Brien was on the phone, uh, or on the phone, on the uh, line, or listening in, he probably could look that up uh, pretty quickly. But I don't know the answer to that. All I know is that it did not bust through the June lows. It did not take out its TD9 count bottom support level. It's got by the D point patterns. And right now, this very moment, at 11, 11 in the morning, prices trade above the top of its daily profile. Now, if you take a look at coming off of the high from August 16th out here, let me just expand out. Well, I'll expand it out. We're not going to see much out here. I'd have to go to my synthetic version of the contract. But just simply, if we take a look at coming off of the highs here in August, this is the first time now that we have price above the top of the daily profile. The question is, will it, in fact, close above this level at day's end? I do not know the answer. The answer there, or the, or the level to be watching, not the answer, is going to be 1757. Before we go take a look at these charts here uh, or go dig, dig down a little bit further, let's just take a look at the market breadth for the S&P 500. Here's the NAT. Well, let's start with the NASDAQ 100. What you'll see in the upper right-hand corner, these speed dials are either in the green or the uh, blue zone out there. That is uh, tells us we have more instruments trade above the top of their profile for the time frames identified versus trading below. That's bullish or bearish. Well, right now, daily 240 and 60 are bullish. If we take a look at the daily time frame specifically, 22 instruments is what it's taken for the NDX 100 to get that bullish crossover above the top of the profile versus 11 below. If we look at the weekly time frame out here, I believe there's some work to be done. That work to be done. So this just tells you and I right now that this is still just a counter trend move. That doesn't mean it ends right here, right now. This rally could or should or may go on through election day out there. Covered that during the segment with Tom yesterday. If we take a look at the uh, um, you've got 45 instruments trading, I'm sorry, you have 45 instruments trading below profile, weekly basis, and 11 trading above profile. So that's where the, uh, um, that's where the issues for the NASDAQ 100 are. The S&P 500, really a similar message, uh, bullish for the daily 240 and the 60-minute uh, time frame. From the daily standpoint, it's not, oh boy, is that, that's not right. It shows 91 above and 91 below, and I know that that's not accurate. When I t well, well, I take that back. It is. We're sitting at the 0%. So talk about being right here, right now. This is where the S&P 500, and I'm not saying necessarily at 1113, but certainly today, October the 4th, this is where if you do get that bullish crossover, that means more instruments trading above the top than the bottom. Right now we're, we're even. We're 91 above and 91 below. So that's something for us to pay attention to. On a weekly basis, though, there still is a lot of damage out there. That damage shows the following. 43 instruments above the top of profile, 294 below the bottom. So the TAS market breadth is suggesting to you and I right now that still this is just a counter trend move. Now, where could that counter trend move take us to? If we take a look at the Dow, that's where I'm going to go to first. The Dow, let's just, this is the weekly chart that I've got up on our screen out here. And we just take a look at a rising and a descending price channel. If we take a look at the rising and descending price channel, where the Dow could head to effectively is the top of the descending price channel. We were up there back in the uh, January time frame. We were up there back in the February time frame. We were up there back in the August time frame. Perhaps that's where we're going to be when we get towards the, uh, well, I don't know what when we're going to get up there. But it is a very possible outcome out here. Price has held uh, support. Uh, the support of, if you want to call it that, it's both its uh, rising trend line, but really more so the descending trend line out there, as well as, let's just uh, put up the horizontal trading range boundary lines. That'll be up here momentarily. These are going to be the weekly levels out here. And so price is likely headed to the 31,530-ish area, but perhaps above that. Steve Rhodes with TFD, and we get back from the uh, break here. We'll go start taking a look at the questions that have come in. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16-year mine life. All of this 
combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, diverse partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Got all the U.S. indices straight to the upside. Let's go to our first question. This is coming in from Dennis. Uh, Dennis writes in, um, what is your short-term view on Apple? Thanks, Dennis, in uh, West Palm Beach. Dennis, thanks for listening. Thanks for the request out there. We've got the Apple charts up on our screen. You're asking about short-term. So from a short-term standpoint, wow, this chart is not accurate. What the heck happened there? Hmm. So the daily chart, let me see if I re... re uh, we should reload all the historical data if I get this uh, back to uh, being correct out here, um, which is going to take a second. So my apology for that. What we will do here is uh, Steve will go to game plan B. Game plan B says, uh, let's go switch over to the black back. Well, there we go. Looks like it's uh, populating right now. Okay, we're going to stay here. Going to stay here. Be patient, Stevie. Okay, so we got Apple trading out at 145.50 or so out here. So we're back to – so the short-term outlook is that first i'm gonna look at the daily time frame so i don't know what when you say short term you know which which time frame it is necessarily but if we look at the daily chart out here let's look at the patterns that are in place so if we take a look at the there's really two different a to b equal cd patterns that are out here for apple let's see if it's taken if apple's been able to complete the larger pattern so here's our a to b level and i'm just going to move this line over to the C point, and voila, the answer is yes, it has. It's more than a one-to-one -one move out there. And so yesterday's bull sash candle confirmed a buy the D point pattern. So we get a confirmation of a buy point, such as this one here. What we then do is what price should do is then go seek out resistance areas. That's where the battle's at. Well, turns out in the case of Apple, Dennis, the, that resistance level will be its daily oscillator and change line. Apple's only been above that for one trading session since its highs out there. So that's gonna be a key area. Right now, that's printed at 147.04. You got to use that as a guideline. That number is going to go up and down as price moves up and down. But the, it's that oscillator and change line area where price will target. If Apple can move above that, it doesn't show on this chart here just yet, but I'll switch over to my other chart, the black background chart, which has picked up a early indication of a new profile that is forming in Apple. 
So we're going to switch over to that chart. So you already know you've got the 147 and change out there area as a, a likely upside target. If price can overcome that level, then what that's signaling to us here, and this is a new bearish structure daily profile that's forming that the next area would be 149.61. Now, 149.61 was very close to the old bottom of its profile out there, but you can see the new one that is out here, 149.61, and the range would be between 149.61 and 153.02. That is your sell zone out there because it is a bearish structured profile. I don't really think there's anything additional here that I can provide to you. I think in the short term, that's what Apple's intentions are. First, to go tackle that oscillator and change line, and then next, if it can clear that, to try the 149 to 153 area out there. So, Dennis, thanks for writing in early. I hope that helps you out. And uh, have a, a terrific uh, Tuesday out there. Let's, uh, I'm going to just turn this off here. These charts are taking just a tad of time to uh, to upload and, and, and maybe taking away from uh, being able to populate some of my other charts real easily. So, the next question came in from uh, Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill wants to take a look at the TLT. So I think we're still on the black background chart. So I will just simply throw the TLT up on the screen here for him and everybody else that's watching. Because what we're really going to do for Mr. Bill is we're going to go take a look at the 30-year Treasury and try to find out what it is communicating to you and I. So right now, Mr. Bill, from a TLT standpoint, what we really haven't had here, we haven't had two consecutive days below the bottom of its daily profile. It's been below, above, above, below, above. Today, we're kind of testing that area out there. So it's just a sideways chop. To the upside, the level that I would be watching in the TLT is a close above 104.47. Irrespective of what the uh, Treasury bonds show us. Now, we'll come back and take a look at those, see what its daily uh, signal is providing to you and I. But right now, price is dealing with resistance, and that is uh, the center of its bullish structured profile. And again, much like we took a look at uh, whatever chart it was earlier that had a bullish structured profile, maybe it was the uh, ES mini, I just can't recall. Once you get above that, odds favor that buyers are going to be able to push price up to resistance, which on the TLT would be 107.33. We do not have that message now. And the longer term, um, you want to admit to long term. So we'll, we'll call that the midterm point out there for the TLT 104.47. You get above that, you have a further rally. Intermediate term, from a standpoint, from a weekly chart, price is well below the bottom of its profile, as is for the longer term chart on the monthly time frame. So now let's go switch over for Mr. Bill. Take a look at the 30 year Treasury. Take a look at this multi time frame charts out here. Monthly chart in the 30 year Treasury, it actually formed as of September a TD 9 count bottom. Well, we know what happens with TD 9 count bottoms. Well, take a look at the last monthly TD 9 count bottom, March of 2021. What did price do? Sought out the oscillator and change line. So very much like Dennis and I were taking a look at Apple and the oscillator and change line where price is likely to head to. Same outcome here. Don't know whether price will take it out or not. But that's what the 30-year Treasury, believe it or not, Mr. Bill, that's the signal coming from it. Now, the opposite signal would be if we get a close below September's low out there, it negates that signal and says the 30-year Treasury is headed lower. The weekly chart this week by Friday, not today on Tuesday at 11.24 in the morning, but the weekly chart could be generating a road momentum indicator bottom. If that happens, what will it seek out? It'll seek out its oscillator and change line. You close above that, then you get a further counter trend move. That would be to the bottom of its weekly profile. You have a TD9 count bottom on the daily time frame out here, Mr. Bill. And that suggests that price is going to try to seek out the resistance levels of its TAS market profiles. It's already doing that right now as we speak. And if price can close above this 129 area, then it's off to the 131, maybe 132.16 zone out there. So you're looking not just for the TLT to move above that 104.47 level, you're looking for the 30-year treasury to move above the 129 area. The low out there, uh, that uh, is on these charts out here, that's really a key area of support. If those things fail, 30-year Treasury is headed much lower. So, Mr. Bill, I hope that helps you out with regard to the uh, TLT analysis you were looking for for the mid and um, uh, intermediate uh, term out there. CKP writes in, and he wants to take a look at the uh, euro. So let's go switch over to the euro charts out here. Uh, if you give me a moment, we'll get right there. And the uh, euro... And surely take a look at the daily right now. I'll come back and look at the other charts. But the daily, you've got a nice road momentum indicator bottom that formed on September 28th. Price then on the following day closed above its oscillator and change line. The euro right now is uh, going to target its most recent high. That's the high from September 20th. That's at 1.005. CKP, 
If price can close above that, then it's likely going to go target the 1.02 area. That's its TD9 count breakdown area. Really supports that that's a likely outcome with on a weekly chart. Even though you don't have a confirmed bottom out here, you do have price above its oscillator and change line. So that says further counter trend rally. If I look at the monthly time frame chart out here, no bottom pattern at all. Not at all. And so uh, the monthly is saying, you know what, the euro wants to longer term head lower. Now, I do believe it's going to head higher from here from an, because what we have is a number of TD9 count failure patterns. The 120 minute TD9 count failed. The 60 minute TD9 count failed. 240 minute has a nice A to B equals CD the upside. That should take us to the 1.004 area. Uh, a to B equals CD pattern on the five hour time frame chart as well, 1.004. So the euro likely headed to 1.004. And I hope that helps you out with the euro. That was for CKP. It's 1126 in the morning, but in about um, seven minutes, a little less than seven minutes, the moon is going to be at perigee. The perigee lunar phase when it's closest to Earth. And you're going to want to note the price levels at that point in time. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. 11.29 and 11.30 in the morning out here in about three minutes. So we're going to go over to my uh, perigee charts out there. Which are really just going to cover the ES, the NQ, gold, and uh, light sweet crude. And we're going to mark uh, where price is uh, trading. So we'll come back to that in just a few moments. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Hector and the fuel injectors. Hector wants to take a look at ticker symbol PCTY. And uh, can you please go give us uh, the oscillator and enzyme resistance and support weekly and daily? Uh, also do a SPY and AB equals CD to the upside. So we'll try to get all those done. So first, 
First things first, daily time frame, uh, PCTY is taking on resistance. That's the top of its daily profile, Hector and Patty. That's a 252.44. We're trading at 253. A close above that 252.44 level. Price will go target its TD9 count breakdown areas. So that's at 260.08 and 262.83. So that's where your battlegrounds are. Oscillator and change line, you're above that. That's at 250.81. You're above the weekly oscillator and change line out there. You're inside its bullish structured profile. Price can get above, close above that center level. That's at 254.36. You could see it move up to 276.88. The monthly chart out here is bullish. Price above the top of its profile. It is above its green oscillator and change line. So that's a bullish signal. Uh, charts look bullish on the weekly time frame. They certainly look bullish on the daily time frame. It's more of a sideways consolidation. But the uh, next moves inside of PCTY should be to the upside. With one exception, there could be a short-term pullback. And if we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart out here, what we have is a TD9 count bottom or top that formed at 1130 this morning. So if price is going to move higher, Hector and Patty, you need to see a close. You'd like to see a close above 253.84, the top of that TD9 count. Otherwise, price should pull back. Now, that pullback could take us all the way back in the 248 and change area out there. So kind of watch that. But otherwise, everything looks very good. I just think you're uh, right uh, in time for a short-term pullback out there. So that was PCTY. I hope that helps you out. Um, I'm just going to put up the charts here for uh, Rachel. CFLT is what she was looking for. Uh, but we've got... Uh, just about 50 seconds before 11.33 rings. That's uh, the perigee lunar phase. And so I want to take a look at uh, that. So we'll see if this chart here populate quickly. I know I typed it in. I don't know why it's taken so long. Uh, but it is. And uh, there we go. So we got CFLT. So just initially here, Rachel, and I think we'll come back to it, is you've got a... Um, I don't know what kind of bottom you have out here in the daily time frame. Uh, maybe it was a buy the D point, but geez, that wasn't even uh, confirmed until today with this gap of the upside. Here's what I can share with you about uh, about uh, CFLT. It's headed for 2793. It's straight about the top of its daily profile. This was a bear structured profile. As long as you close about 2577, 2793 is next on the uh, list. The next resistance area above 2793 is going to be its weekly TD9 count top. That high is 34.39. If price can close above that, that would be a very bullish outcome for you. So that's what I see when I take a look at CFLT. Now, just like we did with the uh, prior instrument for Hector and Patty, the 30-minute time frame shows a TD9 count top. So this suggests you should anticipate that CFLT will pull back to the 2609 area. That is its green oscillator unchanged line. So I hope that helps you out, Rachel. Thanks so much for writing in. Much appreciated. So now let's go switch over. It is 1133. Let's go switch over and let's go take a look at our perigee charts. We're going to go ahead and mark. I would suggest that you do this too, especially if you are a short-term trader out there. And that's just simply to mark the actual, let me do this here. Let me pull this back just a tad. Is to mark the exact price when 1133 happened. Well, I've got a 30-minute chart out here. I've got to change this to the daily time frame. I mean to the one-minute chart. So I'm going to change this to the one-minute chart. I'm just simply going to mark where the 11.33 open was, that was right here. Here's the open for 11.33 for the ES Mini, or for Perigee, okay? I'll just put up the 30-minute chart back up on my screen. We're going to do the same thing out here for, um, why is that taking so long? Now, that is weird. Okay, it is what it is. Now, this is going to be an important pivot point uh, for you to continue to watch and monitor out there. If price remains below perigee, 37.9750, that's what you want to write down on your pad of paper out there. That's going to suggest, uh, one, you could have a short-term top. Two, uh, you would be expecting price to pull back, and then we want to go take a look at where support levels are, patterns, and so forth. Inside the NQ out here, again, I'm going to switch this to the one-minute time frame. We're going to identify where perigee is here. I'll give that level to you. You want to mark that uh, level. That is going to be at 11.649.25. Now, if price trades above that, that tells you that the uh, can, that the uh, rally should continue. If price is trading below that, that uh, says expect and anticipate some kind of retracement. You look for some type of pattern. Maybe it's an A to B equals CD. Maybe it's like this one minute three drive to a bottom pattern. That is out here inside the NQ. I think each of you kind of see that. That's kind of interesting. No bullish reversal. Well, it could be a piercing candle. I have to go back and take a look at it closer, but I'm not going to do that. And sorry if I'm blabbering out here, but this blabbering is really meant for you, each of you out here. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for Goldilocks. And gold, uh, its perigee lunar 
pivot point, 11.33 again. That was 11.34. That was right here. That level is going to be 17.36.50. Put this back to a 30-minute time frame. As long as price remains above that, uh, it is a bullish outcome or should be a bullish outcome for Goldilocks. Finally, let's do this here for Lightspeed Crew. Let's get this back to the one-minute time frame. You'll see the old Apogee pivot point, and then I'll explain to you why I'm doing this, why this is important, or why I believe it's important to each of us out here. So with regard to lights we crude, that pivot point area to watch is going to be 86.64. So many years ago, as I began my uh, trading venture, and I started from scratch, the very first uh, trading uh, class course that I took uh, was with no technical knowledge, and it was a master trader course that Tom O'Brien was holding over weekend. It was from that point in time where he sucked me into this technical analysis stuff. I used to be a fundamental trader. Why? Because I'm a CPA. I'm a cut, paste, and assemble guy. I can understand balance sheets and cash flow and uh, income statements and that whole nine yards, but it didn't tell me what shareholders were doing. So that's why I got into technical analysis. Well, along that journey, part of that journey was uh, um, helped out by Larry Pesavento. We all know Larry loves the uh, I love the uh, lunar and the stars and so forth. So I uh, went ahead and I took the digital, I went ahead and digitized the new American ephemeris out there. And I got, I think it was three or 500 years worth of data. I figured that was plenty of data for me to be able to take a look at. Of course, most of that data is going to be forward. Um, but actually, it went back several hundred years out there. And what I did was I took each of the different um, lunar cycles, uh, each of the different celestial cycles, you know, and I tried to find consistency, and I could not find it. Does not mean that it wasn't there. We've got a number of guys here with Inside TFN there uh, that have found some uses for it. Tim Boss is one. Uh, I forget the other guy over in uh, – um, oh, he's over in Naples. Uh, Norm, Norm Winsky out there. So they found some tools. I could not locate it. However – and that's how the Roadsman Dominicator tool came about because I was searching for uh, searching for some type of uh, uh, some type of uh, competitive uh, advantage utilizing those uh, utilizing those celestial and lunar uh, type concepts out there. Well, when I came and that's and I and that's where I found that Roadsman Dominicator uh, top and bottom pattern. Turns out I found one. That was really that worked really well. Worked really well for me, and that's called apogee and perigee. Apogee is when the moon is furthest from Earth. Perigee is when the moon is closest to Earth. That took place at 11:33 this morning. If you can see the moon during this next couple of weeks, that's where the uh, so the moon will start moving away from Earth or Earth from moon or however that works out. But right now, what I found is that if you identified now all my work was done on the ES Mini. We've got a, a trader inside the den. All of you know him as uh, Z. Uh, he did uh, further work on uh, other instruments out there, found that it worked for gold, found that it worked for light, sweet, crude out there. Really a short-term signal, but if price is below perigee, it's telling you to be short, so to speak, short-term. If price is above it, it's telling you to be long. Note those on your charts out there. They should assist you in your trading and investing. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got the uh, chart here for PCTY back up on our screen. That's because uh, Hector had two questions. One was, to, uh, his question is, this is an A to B equal CD to the upside for the daily time frame out here. Well, the swing point, if we would use that, uh, Hector, would be the, uh, I think what you're looking at out here, would be the trading day of September 28th. Volume there, 454,000 shares. You've done 172 so far. The high out there is 253.26. And yes, if we take a look at that very small A to B, I'm not sure which one you're looking at, but I'm just going to type this one in here first. It would look like this. And uh, that's a 0.73%. Uh, so it gives you a price target of 258, 264 uh, to the upside out there. Um, but first, it's got to take out that swing point at 253.26. You prefer to see it done with volume. No idea whether it's going to have that as we speak. As far as any larger A to B equals CD patterns, the upside, nothing here that I would draw in as we speak right now. And that was for PCTY. You also had that question about the SPY. So let me go over to index ETFs out here. So we take a look at the SPY, and here's where utilizing the equity futures, in my opinion, is better for us than it is using the SPY, the Diamonds, the Qs, the IWM, is because they have totally different profiles out there. So right now you'll see the SPY is above the top of its daily profile. It's in the upper left-hand side, whereas we know the ES Mini is going to go target the top of its profile. It is not trading above it just yet. But with regard to the SPY, there is no A to B or C D pattern that I can type in here uh, to the upside. There's no pattern. What we need to see in order for that to happen is some type of retracement at some point in time out here. So um, with regard to the spies, it's got the A to B equals CD to the downside. That was confirmed yesterday with a bullish reversal candle. Uh, and that could lead to if we if we weren't if we didn't have profile levels, meaning that, you know, we were trading with our hands tied behind our back because those profiles tell us where buyers and sellers reside. Then if we were just take a look at this pattern here without profiles, what we'd be looking at is retracement areas because this, in essence, is a, a buy the D point pattern. And if we take a look at going from the A to the D point out there. The first area or the first price target to the upside for the SPY would take you to the 385-ish area. That's the 0.382 retracement. If price get above that, the elevators continues to move higher. Then we'd be looking to move up into the 0.618 retracement area, and that is at the 403.25 area. So, Hector, I hope that helped answer all the questions that you had uh, inside your email. And you have a, a terrific Taco Tuesday as well, although I don't think that's on Stevie's uh, diet program today. We do have another request is coming in from Charles. I love that. My uh, daughter is going to be is due with a uh, 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 her first out there. Got uh, five grandchildren. This will be number six and uh, due in a couple of weeks out there. And the name she's chosen is Charles out there. So, uh, uh, Charles, uh, nice to uh, nice to see you by email out here. He says, hi, Steve. C-M-R-E is in the shipping sector. So I'm going to get that fired up on my white charts. 
We'll do the same thing here on the black background charts. We'll, whoops, that's not it. We'll further read the question out here, CMRE. And it says, I'm long at 899 a day or two ago. Uh, CME, and uh, it just says hello. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and he's from uh, Framingham, Massachusetts. So as we take a look at CMRE, that is Costamar Inc. out here. Uh, she's trading out at, the white background chart's not updated. I can uh, tell you that it's trading out at 951. Maybe, what chart am I showing? The black. Okay, you guys see the black background charts. So right now, Charles, price is trading above the top of its profile out there. What this chart doesn't show, it shows you the hammer candle. What this doesn't show is uh, the uh, TD9 count pattern uh, area. This has a valid TD9 count bottom. And uh, that TD9 count valid threshold support level, it says perigee, my apology, doesn't matter, 888. As long as price trades above that, being long is good. You're in at about 899, you're at 952. Um, price is trading, you'd love to see it close above that 9, uh, 948 area, the top of its daily profile today. If you do that, then it's suggesting that price may want to make a run for the 1076 level. And I'll show you where that comes from in a moment. The weekly time frame chart out here, you know, if we take a look at the uh, A to B equals CD pattern, the first one, there's more than one, but here's the first one. This is the primary A to B equals CD pattern. The B point being uh, the May uh, low out here and the uh, high being the May, uh, May high, May 30th. So what this has done is this has achieved just a little bit more than the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. You can see that this candle currently, it's only Tuesday, it's only 1147, but so far it has engulfed the entire candle. Remember, the body of the candle is the essence of price. That's what we're really looking at here. If, in fact, uh, price is able to close above 934 on Friday, what you will have, Charles, is a confirmed by the D point pattern on a weekly time frame. That would then suggest price running up to resistance, which right now is the bottom of that weekly profile, 1071. Remember, I also gave you 1076 out there, so it's the 1071, 1076 area that this is suggesting that it wants to make that move. Now, on a monthly time frame, no bottom pattern whatsoever out here. So we're really going to be making, or you're going to be making your trading decisions based upon the daily and the weekly. Let's go switch over to the uh, white background charts out there. We can take a look at Stevie's other tools and signals out here. And what we will see, one, you'll see that TD9 count bottom out here. So that's a beautiful thing. You'll see price above its red oscillator and change line. It is above that uh, top of that daily profile. And where that 1076 level came in from, uh, Charles, is that's the TD9 count breakdown resistance area. So that is a target. Here you can see the weekly time frame. You see that bullish engulfing candle. We can also see that there is a potential resistance zone at around 1046. Now that number is going to change. That's the weekly oscillator and change line. So should a further rally continue out here, that number will go up. And I'll assume it will be somewhere around that 1071 bottom of the weekly profile. As you look at the monthly time frame, you see that there is no bottom signal there. So Charles, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that helps you out with regard to ticker symbol CMRE. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you again soon. So no other requests at this stage here. Let's go take a look at the Goldilocks, the GDX, get a feel for what's going on there. And silver, let's do a, 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 a trifecta out here. So up at the top, you got the daily time frame charts for gold, silver, and the GDX. Down below on the monthly time frame, you got the weekly charts for gold, silver, and the GDX. Let's focus first on the daily time frame. The daily time frame tells us what? Price is trading above the top of its daily profile. Where do you think that price is headed to? Where's the resistance level? And you're absolutely right. That's at 1742.90. That's the TD9 count breakdown area. Now, the real question for Goldilocks, if this is a real breakout, what do you think we're going to see come Friday? We will see a close above the oscillator and change line. Price right now is trading above it. The oscillator and change line number right now is at 1722. What you and I don't know is will price close above it. If price does not close above it, then uh, I feel real stupid to say that uh, gold has made a significant bottom. If price does close above it, well, you've got an A to B equal CD to the downside. That was confirmed. It's a confirmed by the D point. You had that uh, bullish piercing candle. But all that entitles price to do is go take on resistance. Now, if price can close above that oscillator and change line on Friday, then its next areas of resistance are 1757.50 and 17.98. If we take a look at silver, the daily time frame out here, we can see that price is taking on resistance, 2102. TD nine count breakdown area. Price can clear that, 2185 would be the next resistance level. On a weekly time frame, there's an A to B equals CD to the upside out here, but that needs a bearish reversal candle. There's nothing bearish about the weekly chart 
other prices getting back to its prior highs in the 2102 level. 2102 is also that daily TD nine count breakdown area. So where does price close coming into the session today? Now the GDX is influenced significantly by gold and silver. If gold is in breakout mode, then so too is the GDX. And on a weekly basis right now, it has a nice confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom and price right now is above that oscillator change line. That suggests it wants to make 26.66. See roads with TFNN. Be right there. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So big rally, obviously, the last couple of days out there. Um, if we take a look at the, and it's been very, very strong market breadth. This is the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Uh, the center line there, the advanced decline oscillator, is really telling us about the uh, market breadth out here. Uh, it's gone from the extreme oversold condition, which was down at the minus um, 331 level with regard to that reading. And that what this is, the advanced decline oscillator is taking a look at the advanced decline line. And then it's uh, looking at the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average to calculate that oscillator. And that's what this is. And what we can see now is prices above zero. Now when you get above zero, you have to be above zero for two days to suggest that the uh, buyers are now the ones that are in control. But what we can see here is that price is approaching the extreme, uh, the over bought area at the plus 150. We're not there right yet. Uh, we won't get there today. I don't think that we would get there. I don't think it's uh, mathematically possible, 99. But what I do need to take a look at, and I'll do this data, I'll try to do this calculation tonight uh, or in the morning to have this for you, is I want to take a look at the uh, Zweig breadth indicator 
out here um, because uh, when you see market breadth like this, this could be giving us a uh, – this will give us another piece of the uh, clue as to what the market's intent are. Uh, so we'll have to come back to that tomorrow. But in the meantime, uh, in the last minute uh, that we have out here, if we go take a look at what's going on inside the NQ, just to get a feel for the play-by-play -play out here, if we take a look at a 10-minute chart, you've got a nice road's momentum indicator top out here. Price right now is dealing with the bottom of its daily profile. A close below that profile level at the 11.634 area is going to suggest a further retracement. That retracement, I would then say, would take us to 11.605. 11.605 is the bottom of the 15-minute chart. You get below that. And you get below the uh, green asset and change then for the 30 minute time frame. That's which is out at 11.630 right now. That's going to suggest a further retracement. So watch 11.604. If you get below that, we're probably looking at a pullback to the 11.539 area. You've got a TD9 count top on the 60 minute time frame. For the NQ, so that suggests a retracement back to the 11.569 area. So it does look like we've got a short-term pullback, at least, that is going to take place here over the next uh, maybe hour or so. Maybe it's just going to wait for LP to do his show. Folks, great to be with you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a great day. I'll look forward to seeing you on a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there. Take care.